I did read my Bible today. <laughs> Good to see you again, uh, if I could. <laughs> but uh, I'm blessed to see that people do get on and watch the Bible videos. And uh, I am going through Luke and Leviticus and Psalm. And uh, I'm going to just go to the end because I am posting a long video today of my trip down to Washington, D.C., and my message of blessing and curses on our land. And uh, so I hope that you will watch that video, that you'll like that video, that you'll share that video, and uh, that we'll see the hand of the Lord move in our nation. Uh, and that's my prayer, that... Uh, the Lord will move. And, uh, and so the more witnesses that see that the Lord can be called upon and the Lord does listen to the cries of his people, the more that witness that video, the more we'll be able to testify of what the Lord has done. Uh, and that's a good thing. So, uh, in today's reading uh, of Luke, uh, Luke uh, records that Jesus sent out 70 this time. First of all, he sent his disciples out. Now he's sending out 70 disciples. And we think the first time, maybe only the 12 that were called, uh, but there's 70 that go out in this little missionary journey, two by twos, and Jesus said if they receive you in, stay where they receive you, and give them the message of the good news. And if they don't, shake the dust off your feet, because it'll be better for Tyre and Sidon, which got judged big time, uh, than for the cities that do not receive them. And Jesus already had to pronounce a woe on a couple of cities who uh, would not listen to his witness when he came through them. Uh, so the disciples, they come back, the 70, and they're rejoicing that even the demons are subject to them. Jesus told them, you need to rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. If that's a reason to rejoice, and uh, a reason to rejoice that other people are in the Lamb's Book of Life that they witness to, that's a good thing. So, uh, then uh, there was uh, a person that asked Jesus, must, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said, uh, how do you read it? And, uh, the guy said, uh, love the Lord your God, God with all your heart, all your mind, and all your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, you have answered wisely, go and do likewise. And then uh, it said that the uh, teacher that asked Jesus that uh, wanted to be justified. So he said, who is my neighbor? Then Jesus told them, told him the story of the Good Samaritan. And, you know, the, the priest and Levite both walked by the person who had been beaten up and robbed and left for dead alongside the road. But uh, here, Samaritan, which uh, to the Jewish people were no good second-class citizens, and uh, the Samaritan comes by. He's known as the Good Samaritan because he has compassion on the guy who has been beaten up and robbed. Could have been me delivering Domino's Pizza so many years ago. Okay, somebody came and got me off the front porch where I was bleeding and uh, left for dead, maybe. Uh, but the good Samaritan came and rescued him and took him to an inn and paid for his inn stay and, and told the innkeeper, do whatever is necessary to take care of this guy, and when I return, I'll pay you whatever uh, more you you need to spend. So uh, 
Jesus asked them, who do you think was uh, a good neighbor? And uh, the uh, guy that he was talking to said, the third, the Samaritan, which really he did not want to say that the Samaritan did anything good, but he was forced to, and, and he was right. And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. And so we should be taking care of the needs brought before us to the best of our ability. And if we can't do that, I'll guarantee you that we can find somebody who can. And so uh, I remember a, a guy who came to the church in Decatur, and uh, he was distraught. Uh, maybe even suicidal. He was very upset that he did not have work and he felt defeated. And uh, and I went into the church. They called me and I went in and, uh, and I talked to him for a, little, a few minutes, not a very long discourse. Uh, but I said, I... Uh, I don't have any work. I don't know anybody who does have any work. But uh, I do know someone that we can pray to. And he can change everything. And so, uh, as it was, uh, we prayed there at the church. And uh, I told him, I don't have uh, much, but I could take you out to uh, lunch. I can put it on my card, you know. Uh, so I said, would you like to go to lunch? And he said, yeah. And so him and I went to a Chinese restaurant there in Decatur. And uh, as we were getting our food, uh, someone walked in that he knew uh, who ran the Huddle House restaurant construction crew. And that guy was hired on the spot by the construction manager for Huddle House and uh, he bought my lunch. It was, wasn't the guy I took there. The Huddle House manager bought my lunch and his lunch, paid for our meals. And uh, praise God. I mean... Uh, that God intervened immediately as I am saying, I know someone who can intervene on your behalf. And he did within a half an hour uh, become gainfully employed. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. <laughs> I hope you think so. Uh, and so... Uh, uh, Jesus leaves there and goes and meets Mary and, and teaches uh, at Mary and Martha's house. And it was the, our first introduction to Mary and Martha. And they have a brother whose name is Lazarus. And uh, Lazarus is very famous because he comes out of the grave after three days. And... Uh, He's the one whose body surely stinketh, is what his sister said. I just love the uh, King James uh, translation of that. But uh, Martha is distraught that her sister Mary is sitting at Jesus' feet instead of helping to prepare the food uh, that uh, they're going to have after the, the teaching. And, uh, and Martha says to... Uh, Jesus, Jesus, don't you care that my sister has left me in here to slave away and, and do all this work? And won't you tell her to uh, come in and help me? And he just said, Martha, Martha, uh, you know, you're, <laughs> you're so uh, like out of focus is basically. That's not even close to paraphrase. I'm sorry. Uh, but he said, uh, 
Mary has chosen the better work that is sitting at the feet of Jesus, learning from him. Uh, we can't be so work-oriented that we can't take the time to be ministered to by Jesus. And there's a lot of people uh, that go to church and they do their works and they don't take time for the Lord of the church. That's sad. Take time. Get into your word. Open it up. Dust it off. Okay? And read it every day. And then pray it into your life. Let the word of God take root and grow. And uh, allow it to uh, break up the... Uh, the the thorny places or the rocky places and let it uh, fertilize the lawn <laughs> and, and allow you to grow and produce fruit and be a blessing to every life that you touch. That's my directions today. Be a blessing to every life that you touch and you will be a good neighbor. All right? Point, point, point. <laughs> okay. Uh, you have a blessed night, and I hope you are blessing to someone tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen. And uh, one last thing I got on What's Up app or WhatsApp this morning and talked to a brother. In Kenya, it's amazing that you can talk to somebody all the way around the world. And we had a blessed conversation uh, before I started work today. Be a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen.